Welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. This is episode number 45. As always, I'm Shane. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3, or you can come over to the CodeKarate.com website, check out all the other videos I have here, or better yet, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already. Yesterday we went over the Code Filter module, and as you can see here on our test site, it allows you to output PHP in a nice format. So if you're outputting code snippets on your website, you may need to have have it show up so a user can easily copy and paste it or easily read it. And so that adds some nice syntax highlighting for basic code and PHP. However, today I'm going to go over the Geshe filter, and I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that, but we're going to go over this today. And the reason you might need to use this over what we went over yesterday, which is just the code filter module, is the Geshe filter provides a lot more languages, as you can see here. There's a whole list of languages from C++, C++, C, ASP, C Sharp, CSS, PHP, Python, SQL, all different types of languages here that you can use and you can have it syntax highlight for you. And so this of course is useful if you need to have different types of code. And So this is the module that I actually use on the Code Karate site because I do have some posts where I needed CSS or JavaScript or Python. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to first disable this code filter module. And I'll go ahead and uninstall it. And this is just what we went over yesterday. And then we're going to go ahead and download this Geshe filter. And this does depend on a couple different things. So I'll go ahead and download that. And you can see it comes with two module modules, Geshe field and Geshe filter. Now let's go over the requirements for this. There, it requires a libraries API. And it also requires a third party library, which is this Geshe library. And it requires the version 1.0.x version. And so you can come over here and you can see all about this syntax highlighter that the library that it uses. And you can also get a link to the library here and you can manually download that and drop it into your libraries folder. So what you'll need to do is you can go ahead and download the library's API module, turn that on, and also download the 1.0 version of this Geshe library and you can drop that in or if you read here it also provides a Drush make file that will automatically download the library's API and the Geshe library dependency. So you can of course manually download this module and then manually download the library and drop it in but I'm going to also show you how to do the Drush make option. So I'll start by going out to the root of my site. As you can see, it's a basic site. I, I do have a multi-site instance here, so I have to do things a little bit differently, but I'll go through both options. So I'm going to start by running drush make. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and I will show you what the module, what yeah, what the internal lookings of the module actually looks like. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you the Geshe filter module. And as you can see here, there's a whole bunch of files. The important one here is this Geshe filter.make. And that's a make, Drush make file. And you can read up on Drush make on Drupal.org. Just go ahead and do a search for that. But I want to go back to the root of the website. So in this case, this is my root. You can see it's a pretty basic installation has a sites directory, a modules directory, it's just your basic root of your Drupal directory. Normally 
if you have a normal Drupal website, a single website, it's going to be everything's going to be in the sites all folder, which is fine. This will work with that as well. So we're going to run drush make, and I'm going to run dash dash no core. And what this is going to do is it's going to not try to download a full Drupal installation. So I need that option there. And then I also need to go ahead and go find the path of my make file. Make sure I got this right. There we go. So it's going to be at sites. In my case, this is a multi-site. Otherwise, yours should probably say sites all modules Geshe filter Geshe filter dot make. I also need to add one other option because I am in a multi-site. So we'll go ahead and we'll add that one other option. And the option here is contrib destination, and then it equals whatever my multi-site root directory is. So in this case, dash dash contrib dash dash destination equals sites slash test three dot code dot com. So I should be able to run this and fingers crossed everything should work. I'll go ahead and hit yes. So it was able to download the libraries. It downloaded this Geshe and it downloaded the libraries module. So let's go ahead Now if I look in here, you can see I have a libraries directory, which was there before, but if I go in there, you can see now Geshe has been dropped into that libraries directory. If I go into the modules page, you'll see that the libraries module has also been downloaded. So the next step is going to be coming to our website, coming to the modules page, and turning these on. So I'll go ahead and enable both of these. It's going to ask me to turn on the libraries module in order to use the Geshe field. So I went ahead and I turned that on. I'm going to go ahead and click on this configure option here. And you can see it says Geshe library version 1.0 dot eight dot ten has been detected so that means it found the library everything should be good to go and there's a whole bunch of different options you can set you can have the, set the default highlighting mode default line numbers so you can show or not show line numbers you can select different wrapping techniques I'm going to go ahead and select this well, I'll leave it as the default now and I'll show you what it can do the first thing we're going to do two things. The first thing is going to be actually adding a field to our article content type. And we're going to just add a field. We're just going to call this code. It's a basic code field. We're going to select Geshe field and it's going to be a source code text area. So we save that. Click save and we'll leave everything at its default. Now we'll go ahead and go to add content and we'll add a new article and we'll come down to the source code field I'm going to go ahead and select PHP I'm just going to create a very basic PHP function and I'm going to click save. As you can see, it now outputs this code. However, it is a little bit squished here and that's because of the wrapper that it is in. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to change this to be a div wrapper and you can of course try out these other ones. It all just determines how the code is being wrapped and what tags are wrapping the code and now you can see it looks a little bit better. And you can of course override the font size and some of these things with CSS. The other thing of note is how you want to use the CSS mode. By default it uses inline CSS which is the easiest to set up. There are other options to use a CSS style sheet which 
I would recommend doing. However, you're going to want to read this and go through the steps necessary to get that working. It's not overly difficult. However, there are a few extra steps you have to take in order to get that working. So now that we have this working, we're also going to set up our input format to work with this type of code. So I'm going to come into the configuration page, go to text formats, go into the filtered HTML, and select Geshe filter right there. I'm going to drop this in right before the convert line breaks into HTML. You may need to, just like yesterday, play around with this. This seems to have always worked well for me in this order. And so now that we saved that, we can come back to our test code page and if you look down here it says you can enable syntax highlighting of source code with the following tags code, block code, C, CPP, Drupal 5, Drupal 6, Java, JavaScript, PHP, Python, Ruby. So we're going to go ahead and just run some test code right in here with some PHP tags. So we'll go ahead and add that little bit of PHP right in there using opening and closing PHP tags just like it's normal HTML markup. Click Save. And you can see right out of the box it just works. We can always come back here and for instance change to add normal line numbering. If you refresh, you notice it may not take effect right away. You'll either have to clear the cache, or you can come in here and just save this. And now you can see this adds line numbers. For some reason, it doesn't add the line numbers to the actual field, but it will add it to any inline markup. I'm not quite sure of that reason, but you know, maybe someone can figure it out and leave it in the comments as to why that happens. So that's really all there is to it. As you can see, you can use more than just PHP, but we're just using PHP in this example. But it works with all different types of languages, and it's a really flexible option if you have a site where you want to post code examples, and you're going to be posting code examples in multiple different languages. So that's all there is to it this time. And we will be back again next time with another Daily Dose of Drupal. Thanks for watching.